one obvious property of linear models as we have been looking at them so far is that they are linear. This may mean that they have difficulty capturing many kinds of behaviour that we see in real data. But in fact, the fitting of linear models by ordinary least squares regression is predicated only on the fact that they are linear in their parameters, that is to say, the weights. You can, for example, apply any transformations you like to the data before giving it to the model. How is the model even to know? And so models fitted from transformed data can still be linear models. Remember the log-log plots shown back in the introduction. In fact, any model that can be expressed as a weighted sum of arbitrary fixed functions of the input is a linear model and can be fitted by one at least squares. We might denote this like this. In this case, the model is still fitting a hyperplane to the data, but it's fitting it to a transformed data vector, which we might call x prime. This transformed vector, x prime, occupies a different feature space with a different basis. The new space is typically higher dimensional, although strictly it doesn't have to be. And so this is known as basis expansion. It can be useful to think of the basis as a dictionary of elements that the model can combine to build the output that it's looking for. We've already seen this in action. Adding a constant dummy feature x0 to all of our input vectors is tantamount to defining a set of transformation functions that look like this. The new extra basis function h1 is independent of x, allowing the model to add a global offset. The standard teaching example for basis expansion is polynomial fitting where you define a set of uh, monomial expansion functions that might look something like this. You'll be doing this explicitly in the lab exercises though, so we won't go into details on it here. Instead, let's consider a few other examples. As a first simple uh, and essentially useless but illustrative example, consider a basic frequency decomposition of a signal. In this case, we will define only three basis functions, which are signs of uh, different products of the input value x. Obviously, this is highly simplified, and there aren't very many signals that you can model just with these three frequencies, but the idea is to have something illustrative. We could imagine using a much larger basis with a large number of different frequencies and also the frequencies at many different phase offsets. In practice, this would be enormously inefficient and really you'd just use a fast Fourier transform instead. So this is what our three basis functions would look like. In effect, you've got a fundamental frequency, a second harmonic and the third harmonic. And here is some example data that's been constructed using these three frequencies. First, in a completely clean form, where it's only consisting of those. Secondly, with noise added, so this just has some additional Gaussian noise. And finally, we have an example of a signal which has been created in exactly the same way, but which includes frequencies and phases that are not in our basis. When we attempt to fit these signals, we will be estimating the amounts of each frequency present in that signal. In the first case, with the clean signal, doing so allows us to perfectly recover the original weights that went into the signal. For the noisy signal, we still get a reasonably decent recovery of the weights, but there are a few small errors introduced by the noise. In the case of the third signal, constructed out of frequencies and phase offsets that are not present in the basis, we get a completely nonsense fit. In this case, there are no sensible weights to recover, and so whatever is produced is going to be more or less meaningless. 
another potentially more useful example, we can attempt a piecewise constant fitting of a function. In this case, we will partition the feature space into distinct intervals and then define functions that simply indicate whether or not the supplied input value is within that interval. In one dimension, we'll choose a series of boundary values, which are known as knots, which we will call T1, T2, up to Tm. And then we'll have a set of basis functions that look like this, which just say, is the input value in this interval? The expanded vector x prime is just a one hot vector indicating which region of the feature space the particular sample is in. When we fit this, the fitting process will learn the mean of the output values associated with each region of feature space. In this case, the basis functions will look like this. And if we attempt to fit these to some data, then we get results like this. Here we see a fit to a quadratic function using this piecewise constant approach. Here it's a fit to a sinusoid. And finally, a fit to an exponential. A somewhat more sophisticated um, approach to the same kind of problem is to fit a piecewise linear spline. In this case, we're still fitting to partitioned regions of the input space, but instead of fitting a single constant, we will fit a linear function, so a straight line segment. Once again, we choose m boundary values, the knots t1, t2, t3, up to tm, and then our basis functions look like this. The form of these might seem slightly arbitrary, but it has the effect of constraining the fit so that all of the endpoints of the line segments actually meet. In this case, the basis functions will look like this. And here we see piecewise linear spline fits to the same data that we saw earlier, the quadratic, the sinusoid, and the exponential. You can see here that we've managed surprisingly good fits to nonlinear functions using just a linear fitting procedure. Linear regression with basis expansion can really fit a wide range of functions and is often quite effective. It has a number of issues. First of all, the basis is not learned it has to be specified up front in advance. In effect, it's a whole battery of hyperparameters that you have to come up with. Now, for some problems, there may be obvious choices for these, but in other cases, it may be quite arbitrary. If the basis is not appropriate for the data, then the results that you get can be complete rubbish, as you saw in the third example for the frequency decomposition case. If you have a basis that is too flexible or too specific, that may encourage overfitting. Another problem with basis expansion is that the noise distribution can be distorted. If we go back to the additive error model that we developed in the previous section of the lecture, we can see that we assumed that all of the noise all of the errors and uncertainty occurred only in our y values. They were all independent of x. In practice, this is very unlikely to be the case. Your model inputs will always be noisy. In the straight linear case, that doesn't really matter so much because the sum of a whole bunch of independent and identically distributed noise contributions on all of your different weighted sum elements will still give you uh, a Gaussian noise distribution. But any transformations that you apply when doing a basis expansion will act on the noise in those values and can uh, distort them. They may amplify the noise, they may change its shape, perhaps making it asymmetric. They may also lead to the noise becoming more correlated. All of these are things that may disrupt or mess up your fitting. 